In this video, we are going to continue discussing the process of digital whiteboard writing. Anyone who prefers writing on regular pen and paper instead, feel free to skip ahead to the next video. For everyone else, let's go. Now that we have discussed the necessary hardware for digital whiteboard writing, let's move on to the software. Basically, you need some sort of application, some sort of software that will emulate a whiteboard that you can write on. So you can use two types of apps. Pure whiteboard apps, these look more like a canvas, an infinite sized canvas where you have the freedom to move around. There's not a lot of options, but it's all right. The note taking apps tend to have more options. They usually have a notebook like organized interface with specific page layouts. Sometimes there's some restrictions, but there's also more options. So the thing that you want to um, the things you have to uh, take into account when choosing an app, you need to have clean and legible link. You want to be able to export your lecture in some sort of document format because just a video is usually not enough. And you should also be able to properly zoom in and out. And it's also a good idea to have lots of um, options to import different types of document so you can include the other types of media in your lecture as well. There are many apps available online to use for digital handwriting. Here I have listed some popular ones that I have personally tested, except the iPhone, iPad, Mac ones because I don't have anything in this platform. In this video, I'm going to review three apps, the ones that I have marked here. Two from Windows, one whiteboard app, one note taking app, and one from Android. This is a hand note, note taking app, I guess. It has a lot of options and has a neat format. For iPhone or iPad users, my suggestion would be to try out both of these apps because I have tried out their Android equivalents and they were quite satisfactory. Anyway, let's uh, move on to discussing the individual apps. Microsoft Whiteboard is Microsoft's own whiteboard software that gives an infinite sized canvas and a small amount of tool, but it's very well designed and can easily insert Word, PowerPoint or PDF documents, which is a very good thing in my opinion. And it also allows easy export options. So let's go ahead and take a look at a demo. So in Microsoft Whiteboard, this is the starting screen. You might have some from your Microsoft meetings, but in general, you'll have to create a new whiteboard. You'll be offered some templates, which might be useful for certain types of meetings, but it's not necessary. So if you are using it in a regular PC like I am, you will have a bar like this. It will be different if you have a laptop or um, pad that has an active pen and you have this option on. In that case, it will look like this. Just hold one thing. So let's keep it off for now. So when you're using the mouse, the first option here is switch to inking mode. We'll get to that soon. So first, let's try adding some text. It's nice and easy. You can make it bigger. You can rotate it. Also, as long as this option, object snapping, is on, everything will be rotated in a very nice, easy way. You can delete it if you wish. Then you can add a bunch of notes. This is useful when you are using the whiteboard to have a meeting with someone. Whiteboard is meant to use for collaborative work, but for lectures, you don't really need them. You can just hit undo and remove them all. Next, you can add some pictures if you wish, or you can go to the insert menu when you are going to have a lot of options. Note grids is just a place where you can add a bunch of notes in an organized form. 
this will bring up the templates again. You can see that they have a certain format, so you can use them if they're useful to you. These are just a few stickers. What will be most useful to us is this, these three. So you can insert any PDF to your whiteboard. Let's just pick one. You'll get the option to either insert all the pages of your PDF or just a couple few. So let's take these two pages. You can see that you can zoom in and out and you can explain the PDF content to your students while you're writing here in the inking mode. Now let's also try some other types of documents like a word document this will also give you an option to insert a certain number of pages the same will go for powerpoint as well so let's now get to inking mode in inking mode you have a bunch of pens a highlighter two colorful pens and an eraser. So let's write something. So you can do some highlighting and we make the sizes bigger. Okay, easier to highlight now. And if you want to remove things, you can just use the eraser tool. It starts small, but if you keep rubbing it, it becomes bigger. You can also use the ruler to draw nice straight lines. You can change the angle of the ruler with your mouse wheel. This is pretty useful when you have to draw a lot of diagrams in your classes. Then you can use the lasso tool to select a bunch of things at once. So you can move them around if you wish. Even the pages can be moved around if you want. And lastly, the undo and redo tools. Now let's see some new options offered by whiteboard is ink to shape. If you have this on, if you take a pen and draw something that vaguely resembles certain shapes, it will whiteboard will turn it into a nice precise shape. So do note that your whiteboard is infinite inside. You can keep writing and writing until you are ready to share. But once you are ready, click here and go to export. Here you can export it either as an image or a high quality image SVG. So I recommend this one because this PNG is a very popular format. You can also send it to OneNote if you wish or post it to Teams. And if you think that you are done with the whiteboard and you want to start a completely new, fresh one, you can also clear the canvas. If this is a mistake, just undo. So with that, you are pretty much ready to share your lecture with the world. If you want a video, however, you'll need to record it using some other format because you can only export it as image. That will be all about Microsoft Whiteboard. OneNote is a free software that comes with Microsoft Windows and it's available in two versions. OneNote 2016, which features more options, and OneNote for Windows 10 that has newer but lesser options. Both of these software have their pros and cons, so it's up to you which one you choose. 
Either way, OneNote in general is excellent for putting typed and drawn content together in an organized format. Like unlike Microsoft Whiteboard, which was pretty uh, charming in its simplicity, OneNote has many options that are useful for note taking, like the handwriting as long as it's legible enough, can be converted to formulas of text. Also, if you insert any pictures that contain text, you can actually search that text. That is, it has optical character recognition options. There's also some more options like dictation features. You can simply talk and your notes, uh, your notes will be entered in text. There's also different useful templates available for note taking, for example, like meeting notes. And uh, just a small warning, if you're using OneNote 2016, you will have to add a plugin for this dictate option. And there's also another plugin that's called OneTastic. It allows you to add some features that are not usually available in OneNote. So check, check that out as well. For the purpose of this demo, we are going to use OneNote 2016, which has much more options and lets the user personalize more and is also similar to other Office software in its layout. In OneNote, we store our content in notebooks. These notebooks, let's open this one, you can see that they are divided into several tabs here. Each of them are called sections. So you can add a next new section by clicking here. And each section has a number of pages. You can add more pages like this. And these pages can also have sub pages. You can make this page a sub page. From now on, any new pages added will be a sub page. The sub pages can also have more sub pages. Like you can add a new page and make it a sub page. So you can have a hierarchical structure like this. These pages can be given different types of templates from the Insert tab. Each page is of infinite size by default. It's possible to assign a page size, a page size like A4 or letter, but you will be able to write or draw across the page border, so it's nothing more than a marker. The Home tab here contains the basic options for typing. The only new thing that we have that was not seen in any other Office software is the tag part. If you, you install the one testing plugin, you can see that we have some more options here. Let's test out OneNote's note taking capabilities by making a short list. So you can see we can just start typing by clicking anywhere. I can just click here and start another list. So let's return to our first list. I can just go down and type another line so maybe uh, I need to meet x call y and email z so I did not need to bullet it like this because in OneNote you can do that very easily just select the line where you want to put a tag and click what you want for example maybe you want to make this a to-do list so just add this to-do boxes if I wanted, I could have just selected them all. And there we have a to-do list. It's also possible to label them according to their priorities, like important. Maybe I'm confused about emailing him. Like I can put in a mark like this. So there are many useful tags here that make note taking easier. So I have made another list and say among them, the second option is important. If you have multiple lists, then you can search for tags. You will get a tag summary like this, where all the, the list items are listed according to tags. So you, if you just take a look at this, you can immediately see that the important items you have across lists are these two items. It's also possible to transfer items across lists, like you can drag it here, you can move them around horizontally or vertically. 
The one one tastic plugin allows us to download macros. The macros are just additional functionalities. Like I have downloaded two macros. One lets me search and replace. The other one allows me to sort these pages. Now to the insert tab. The insert tab allows you to insert different kinds of media and there's also one extra option called insert space. This is very useful for pages with a lot of content. For example, say you want to have some space between these two. Maybe you want some extra space for more options. So click here, drag and there will be some space created between these two points. Do note that everything here will be affected. Like you can see the to-do list has also been affected. So if you didn't want that, you'd better move it elsewhere. The page templates here will allow us to add pages that have a specific template. There are many types of templates like academic ones that contain lecture notes, blank ones that are just of a specific size or specific background type, business ones that have lots of meeting notes. I think these will be very useful for teachers. There's also some purely decorative ones. They just give you some sort of small design at the uh, top left. There are also some planners, to-do lists, similar to the ones I made, but they give us a ready-made nice list. The draw tab is where all the handwriting options are. In OneNote, you can have your written text and handwriting, handwritten drawing side by side. So you can choose one of these pens and start drawing. You can change the color and thickness or use it as a highlighter. You can add different types of shapes. I particularly find these coordinate ones very useful. The insert space option is here as well. So if you want to push stuff around, you can. These last two options are very interesting. You can turn your handwritten text into type text or type formulas. I'm going to use it my stylus and write something. Okay, let's see if one not can recognize it. It can. Now let's try, try writing an equation instead. Okay. You can see it has properly recognized it. If it didn't, you could have changed things. For example, you can write new things or you can erase things. It's also possible to select and correct misrecognized ink. What we wrote has properly been recognized. So let's just insert it. You can see that it has now turned into an equation. Before we move on to the next tab, let's take a look at a tool I forgot to mention. The eraser tool can change between regular eraser that removes a part of your stroke or it can be a stroke eraser that removes all of your stroke. Now let's go back to the insert tab for a bit. Just like Microsoft Whiteboard, OneNote allows users to insert PDF, Word, PowerPoint and picture documents. Similar to Microsoft Whiteboard, the documents can no longer be edited but only viewed. However, OneNote has one very attractive feature that even though you cannot edit the files, you can, however, search for text. This thanks to OneNote's optical character recognition capabilities, OCR in short. To do this, we must insert the document as a file printout. Let's go ahead and choose a Word document to test this out. One limitation of OneNote is that it cannot choose the number of pages to import, so it imports all the pages at once. Let's repeat the process for a PowerPoint presentation. As expected, the text cannot be edited. However, we can search for text. 
each instance of the text will be highlighted when we search. This can be very useful when the teacher is both writing on a whiteboard and referring to slides. We can test that searching for text works pretty well inside a Word document as well. However, let's take a look at the most impressive feature in OneNote. You can insert a picture. Here we are using a picture that I took using my phone camera. In these cases, our success will depend somewhat on the picture clarity, the page quality, and the uh, complexity of the formatting. So this is simple enough, and we get a high level of success. You can see all the instances of the word income has been properly recognized. If we want, we can right click and copy the text and then paste it elsewhere to see what exactly OneNote managed to recognize. If OCR doesn't work properly, right click on the picture, disable and re-enable the make text searchable option. We have pasted the text. The formatting of the text will be the same as what's shown in the picture. So let me resize the text box a little. We will discuss more OCR options in a later slide. Let us now check the rest of the tabs. The history tab is mostly useful for collaborative work. The review tab is mostly just spell checking and thesaurus options, but it also has this neat option called link notes. This is quite useful if you're doing research involving Word and PowerPoint documents. So let's try it out. This launches OneNote into this docked window and it asks where you want to put your link notes. So let's pick this one untitled page, name it linked notes. Now we are going to open a Word document. So we are going to take notes from here. So let's write out these three algorithm names. Let's put this here. You can see that there's this sign indicating that we are taking notes from this specific document. This sign will be on each line that's from this document. Now let's change our view to this PowerPoint presentation. Let's take some notes from here, noting down the terminologies. In income year, you can see that as I type, the PowerPoint sign is popping up. So if later I want to check where exactly I got this term from, all I need to do is hover here and I can see it's this document. To test this out, let's open this document, sorry, close this document. You can see that this is from references docx. If I click this, the document will open again. So this can be very useful in research because you might take a lot of notes, but re you might not remember where exactly you took them from. So if your source is a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation or even some other OneNote notebook, then you can just, just look up the source here and you'll be able to find it. You can exit the link notes view by clicking here and you can also stop taking link notes by choosing this option. We'll keep it down for now. Okay, so we are back in regular view. We now have two windows open of one note, so you can have multiple windows open at the same time. If we go to the view tab, you can see that you have some more options like this, like you can even turn this window into a docked window, just like the link notes earlier. You can also add more windows, like we already have two windows, we can add another. So now we have three windows. You can even make a new docked window. So the window will be docked here from the start. This is just too many windows, let me close them, except the original one. You can also change the pages, uh, color, ruler lines, etc. here. 
The zoom in and zoom out options are available here, but I would suggest you just use the control plus mouse wheel motion that is much easier compared to clicking here every time. The last tab is pretty small. It only has this immersive reader and the dictate option I cannot show it to you right now because we are already recording but usually by just clicking on dictate then clicking on somewhere to make a text box if you speak Microsoft OneNote will recognize your voice and turn it into text. Lastly, let's talk about how you can share your notebook content with others. So most of the time you want a PDF document that you can easily share with your students. So in that case, click File, Export. Now you can decide to either export a single page. In that case, you have these options or you can export a whole section in that case, all the pages under that section will be included, or you can export your whole notebook. So let's choose PDF. Now let's open the PDF. When we look at the exported PDF, it becomes clear that the pages have been exported in the same order they were originally in in the notebook. So the quick notes, everything under the quick notes has been added to the start of the PDF, then this section, and lastly this section. Our very last page was this link notes, and the one before that was this picture. So let's take a look, and there it is. So that is it. I hope you enjoy using OneNote for note taking. So this software is available for Android only. It's a rare free software that provides a lot of premium options like it allows us to draw in layers. It allows us to customize the background in many ways. You can even draw mathematical shapes pretty easily like circles, lines, rectangles, etc. And the import you can even import PDF to annotate on. Even though it's uh, rather limited, we are going to discuss a different software just for annotating. Also, the most important, it allows very easy export as both PDF and images. This makes it a lot easier for your written words to share with your students. So let's look at a demo. This is the starting interface of Android Pro. We start a new document by clicking on the yellow button. The page that open up looks like this with the tools at the top. The first button consisting of four bars allows us to access the settings of the document. We can rename the document. Choose if we want to use stylus or finger. The other options will be more relevant later, so we'll come back to them. So the first tool is the pen tool. We have a number of different pens. The first four are free. They're basically what we need. So we're testing out the first type of pen. It supports pen pressure and is pretty stylish. The second one is more simple. The third one does not have any pen pressure and is much thicker than the previous two. The last one is the highlighter. The next tool we're going to take a look at is the shape tool. Here we can find straight lines and rectangular and oval shapes. The rectangles can be either regular rectangles or they can be pure squares. Similarly, the round shapes can also be ellipses or they can be circles. In that case, we just have to click circular. The eraser is also of two types. The remove objects eraser can remove one object in one go. 
On the other hand, the ear stroke parts eraser takes more time to remove things because you have to cover the whole stroke. Personally, I prefer the first option, even though you might accidentally remove a little bit too much if you go wild with it. You can also enter text. Similar to Microsoft Whiteboard, you can change the text in size by simply dragging. You cannot change the font or anything, but I think this is pretty clear. You can change the color in many ways. You can also rotate it if you wish. You can copy and paste and make duplicates. Tool in this list is the selection tool. We have actually already seen the effect of this tool on type text. Now we're going to see how it fares with handwritten strokes. You can see that we can change the width of any stroke or apply the same operations as we did for the type text. One rare feature that Handwrite Pro offers is the ability to use layers. We have multiple layers, put them on top of each other, change their order, delete any if necessary. We are now going to work on the top layer and everything we've done so far is going to be in the bottom layer. We are going to import a picture from the gallery. On second thought, let's take a picture. So let's take a picture of this plant. We can resize the picture if necessary. It does not. We can also rotate it if we wish. The same option as before. So we have the picture on the top layer and the text in the bottom layer. If we change the order, you can see the texture now on top of the picture instead. The layering feature can be very useful for drawing engineering diagrams that have a lot of intersecting lines. One other thing about Handwrite Pro is that you can save your frequently used brushes. So in this one and two buttons, I had some brushes saved, so that's how I could select them so easily. We can also change the page setup from here, like page size, orientation, and ruling. So let's get rid of all the ruling and add some color to the background. Also, if you have a messy page, you can also delete all the content here at once. This cannot be undoed, so you get a warning. This is also one of the places where we can add, insert a new page. As you can see we have added two more pages. We have three pages now. All of them are of the same setup, page setup as before. You can move between the different pages by either clicking the greater than signs above at the top of the page and you can also click a number and scroll to go to different pages. It's also possible to delete pages from here. Now let's take a look at the available export options. If you're going to export the document with all the pages, you can either go for a, a format unique to a Handwrite Pro or you can export it as a PDF. Otherwise, you can export each page as an image. Handwrite Pro also has some cool PDF annotation abilities. You can use the PDF import option to open a PDF. You can see we have opened up a PDF. Now we can write on it. Pretty much do anything we do to a blank page. And we can also remove it afterward. The PDF content will not be impacted. However, this isn't really a PDF annotation tool, so we use Zodo for our PDF annotating purposes.